In this video, I'm going to show you how to fold a rabbit ear triangle sink, which is a basic tessellation technique. This is the crease pattern to use. It's on a triangle grid and there are some off-grid creases which form this um, butterfly of two triangles. Now, I prefer pre-creasing all the creases and then collapsing. And then um, I'll just quickly show you how to uh, do that. You basically take um, two creases that form 120 degree angles, so two triangles in between, and the third one, so that you have this tip forming. And then you want to uh, take the crease in between that kind of separates this 120 degree angle and make that into a mountain fold and then squish this together along the pre-creasing you already did. Just like this. And then when you have this closed, you press on this point, on the third uh, off-grid crease, like this, and then you can collapse it down. And you can collapse this to one side or the other. But this is just half a rabbit ear triangle sink. You do the same thing on the other side. Again, we have this point, and again we create that 120 degree angle popping up and this is the third one but it's already collapsed then again you bring that in between crease up push together and then push on that off grid crease and then you have a rabbit ear triangle sink but this is with the pre creasing in place so Next I want to show you how to go about this if you don't do the pre-creasing before. And for that we're going to start with a triangle grid that has eight divisions. And I have a video on that and I'm just going to quickly speed through it right now. So now we have a triangle grid with eight divisions that gives us ample space to make a rabbit ear triangle sink. So we're just going to take the central point so that we have lots of space around. I'm just going to quickly mark that. And then as before we're going to make three creases that have each two triangles in between, or in other words, um, 120 degree angles. And then, as before, we're going to take that crease between these two triangles and also make it into a mountain fold. And then we're going to start making the first off-grid crease exactly through two triangles. So we're going to align these two edges. And then you can crease through right here by pushing one, two triangles. And on the other side, we do the same thing. So here, again, we have that mountain fold and this one, we align it nice and straight, edge to edge, and crease right between these two triangles. And now you can see that we have two off-grid creases. And as before, we can collapse the three together. And I'm going to put my finger... If you can see, you've got a triangle here. And you've got a triangle here. And we creased by pushing right there. That's where the new creases were created. Now I'm going to put my thumb and my index finger just on that spot so that it's fixed. And then I'm going to release it a little bit and take my other hand going along this mountain fold and push it so that uh, the, the, trying, the two triangles right here right between the tip of my finger and my thumb, that flattens out. 
Can you see that? So now we have one triangle here and then it opens up and there is this flat surface. And I think it's easier to see this from the other side now. So this is the structure we have. This is where I'm pinching it together and this is the area we just opened up a bit. And I'm just going to see that. That's the same area. I'm just going to push in the center here and you can see it pushes right there. Right here is what it, where it's, it's happening. And the third off-grid uh, crease is going to be created between this point and that point. So you just push that together and then you can push it flat like this. So seen from the other side we can collapse this completely like this and that's the other side. This is half a rabbit ear triangle sink. Now on the other side we want to do the same thing. This is the point we started with. So again we want that 120 degree angle. This is the first crease but that's already collapsed. This is the second one. This is the third one and the one in the middle to create the off-grid creases. You can even try and do this simultaneously, at least once you have some practice. Just align them and then press again on this section right here to create the off-grid creases. And then again open the paper here. And this is where the third off-grid crease has to go for the second half. And I'm just going to push that in. And now not looking at it from the back, but just from the front. I just had to push that in again along the crease we already created. And then you can see these edges will already um, align with existing grid creases and then you can flatten it and then you have your rabbit ear triangle sink done. You have this triangle popping up which is kind of like a rabbit ear and in the back you have a structure that looks like this and opens up like that. And then on this side you can now see that you created these off-grid triangles that kind of form a butterfly. Next we're going to look at how to put more than one rabbit ear triangle sink uh, together. So here you can see you have this raised triangle which is created by three rabbit ear triangle sinks. So turning the paper over and unfolding it, this time around I'm actually uh, using the other side. So here you can see um, I have valley folds for this butterfly shape and here they are mountain folds. That's just because I'm using the other side of the paper. So you can observe that there are um, three butterfly shapes that are off-grid here and they meet in these points so that you're basically forming a nice star shape. And uh, it doesn't really matter whether you use these two for a triangle sink or these two, obviously, because it's all symmetrical. But let's, for uh, this video, kind of concentrate on these two blue triangles fitting together, these two black ones and two, these two red ones. And we're going to turn the paper over and now I'm just going to try and flatten this out as far as possible so that the paper doesn't memorize too much how it's supposed to fall in place because with tessellations uh, once you folded them and you unfold them a bit they kind of memorize uh, the way you folded them before and they'll collapse very easily. So I'll try to kind of make it a bit harder again. So here is one of the central points of uh, this butterfly shape you can see here. So we're going to start with that and we're going to make a um, three mountain folds that, uh, that always have two triangles in between them. And then as before I'm going to raise a third mountain fold between two of these and then align this edge with that edge and this edge with that edge. As it's pre-creased it's very easy. 
and then I'm again going to push two triangles and then push the third off-grid crease to get half a triangle sink. I'm just going to try and collapse this down completely, although the paper already knows where to go for the next triangle sink, just ignoring that. So then you want to form the second half and again you have your central point and you open up these two mountain folds right there. Then you raise the third one, you push them together, you open up, you push in the third off-grid crease and then you collapse down on on-grid creases that already exist. So you have your first rabbit ear triangle sink. Now you move on to next, the next one and you already have one mountain fold which we're going to use we're going to count one, two, three triangles. That's the middle of the next butterfly shape. So we're going to open this up, leaving that mountain fold in place and adding two more of those mountain folds on the grid, each having two triangles in between. We're almost um, at the edge of the paper here, but that's okay. Um, usually you'd have bigger paper, but at some point you will reach a, an edge. So it's inter interesting to see how that works. So again, we're going to raise that mountain fold between the 120 degree angle and again push them together like this, open up and push together to get half a rabbit ear triangle sink. So again, we can fold it flat and right here this section we're ignoring just as if we hadn't done anything there yet. For the second one it's totally possible. And then again we open up we again create our 120 degree angle creases and here again I'm ignoring that there is extra layers of paper here just treating it as if it was a single layer. Again raise the central one, push together, open up, push in the crease and then your second rabbit ear triangle sink is all done. Again this paper I treat it just as if it was a single layer of paper. Now the problem is for our third triangle sink, a rabbit ear triangle sink, we need to open up those layers again so that we can distribute them just the way we want. You can also see we have two mountain folds here and we need them for each half of the triangle sink. So let's first just concentrate on this mountain fold here and we're just going to open up the layers a bit. You can see these pretty much stay in place but the paper will also memorize where it went. So um, if they open up a little bit it will be easier to collapse them later on. We have this mountain fold so we want 120 degree angles to that. So you can see we have these three creases and this one we're kind of ignoring. And then you have a 120 degree angle here and we're going to raise the mountain fold between it and push together, push inside to collapse. And then the first half is done. Now the second half actually um, kind of went where I wanted it to go but perhaps for you it didn't. So we're just going to observe this again. This is already folded. Now we're going to take this crease. We want a 120 degree angle and this is the second um, crease that we'd have to put in place, but it's already done, just like with a single rabbit ear triangle sink. And now we have these two, press them together with the mountain fold, push in that third one and collapse. And then you can see you have three rabbit ear triangle sinks. You could push them the other way, of course, which would give you a different shape, um, but I think this one is nicer to see that you kind of have this raised triangle and if you fill the whole paper um, with uh, just these rabbit ear triangle sinks you will get a model that's called stacked triangles as shown in um, Eric Yedes book Origami Tessellations and the finished model looks like this so you can see there's all these raised triangles which are exactly the pattern you created right here.
and as you can see there's a crease pattern in this book and it just shows all of those off-grid uh, butterflies, I like to call them, which then create this wonderful model. So I hope this has helped you understand how rabbit ear triangle sinks work and happy folding.